certainly have a crisis, and we certainly have an election for governor. Um, Mark, given the, the dynamic that TJ just described, given the pretty picture just painted about the current state of, of California, why did you decide to start up here? I mean, I'm assuming your company could have, unless there was something unique about it, I'm assuming it could have started, you could have started anywhere. Uh, we decided to, to do it here for two reasons. Um, number one, there's great talent here. And so, to me, it always comes back to people. And so, this was the place where I thought that we could get the best people and have the best people to achieve our, our vision. Um, the second is that for me personally, um, and for my family, we find California be, to be now becoming less diverse, but a relatively diverse environment that where, if I look at where do I want the roots for my family, where do I want them to grow up, what kind of values do I want them to be able to um, be exposed to, this was a good place for doing that. And so the idea of moving out of California to start a company versus being here for my family was a positive thing. And I, I bring that up because I think the one thing I will say about sort of the uh, less government is better sort of theory is it all depends on the viewpoint, right? So what government can do if effectively run is help in dealing with inefficiencies and inequalities. And if the government doesn't do it, who will? And so when you get to your question around what kind of constraints can government start putting on companies and whether it's taxes or fees or whatever, it's really about what goals are they trying to address and are the goals big enough and important enough with which that there's a compelling reason to do so. And so I can argue all day long about whether you should or shouldn't do cap and trade, but if cap and trade were the only way that those who um, grew up impoverished in, in the country could get good education, hmm, I'd have a different view than if it was all about you know, whether everybody was gonna get a free car. Mm -hmm. I mean, so to me, that's, that's part of the trade-offs that one has to go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all based on the values that you're bringing to the place. I think another reason that a lot of companies start here is, well, there used to be mostly venture capital stayed here, but it's that also, the risk taking that both of you have taken, mm -hmm. it's kind of applauded. I, there's not many places where you can start, maybe fail, start again, maybe fail again. I mean, you have that opportunity here to be that entrepreneur and, and, and to try. Mm -hmm. And we applaud that in this region. In other places in the world, it's not, not so much like that. So I think to start a company, I think that's why it's, there's still so many companies started here. But then when they mature, it's really hard to keep it here. Well, and, when, and, I, when I pulled my U-Haul over in the Sierra Nevada, then I'm convinced almost 90% of Californians pulled the U-Haul over Sierra Nevada. I don't know anybody that's native, maybe some people in here. Um, you come to California and say, I'm never going away. Yeah. So, you know, and yeah. diversity is part of it. I come from Wisconsin, it's not diverse. You come to California, you've got all this diversity, which to me is a, a very positive thing. Um, now, why, why would you start a company here? We just started a startup here. Mm -hmm. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask you about that. Well, Tell okay, it. let me, let me, uh, you know, you could, uh, I won't do it, but you can imagine if you ask me to recite all of the laws, taxes, and hassles with regard to being in downtown Manhattan, you probably could do a pretty good job painting a bad picture. But can you imagine a financial firm, for example, an American financial firm? that didn't have either headquarters or one of its most important offices in New York. It's the center of the world for finance as well. Silicon Valley is the center of the world for technology. So what's really changing, and it's really unfortunate, is my job's not going to go away from Silicon Valley, and the brilliant engineer's job's not going to go away. We're going to pay what's ever required to pay all these burdens that the state of California puts on us. The person that's going to get blown out of California are those factories I shut down, those blue-collar yeah. jobs, those blue-collar jobs with good insurance. Those are the ones that were, were you know, the, somebody's definition of the greater good. And then we is, get a bifurcated community yeah. with yeah. have, have nots, and, and, yet, uh, and we're pretty I, close to that. I, I don't even mean the debate, but the Milton Friedman, Milton and Rose Friedman Foundation, one of their most important things they do is private enterprise schools. And if you look in California, the cost per student in private 
schools is less than and the quality of education is greater than the public schools. So I, I don't see improving schooling uh, as being um, giving more money to the government. I see improving schooling as having, <laughs> there's a lot of money to be made in schools. There's a lot of kids. You know, you talk about 5,000 bucks a year per kid. You know, a lot of money to be made. What you want is about eight guys like me and him, different views, this is the way it ought to be done, that's the way it ought to be done, all competing with each other to educate your kid, and, 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 and all of a sudden, I guarantee you what the education you're going to get in the free market like that, which is what Milton espoused for California schools, voucher program in effect, uh, you're, we're going to do better in, in competition as opposed to I'm an employee for life. TJ, you're going to put me in the position of ending the conversation with your plug on, on, on charter schools. <laughs> that was masterfully done. I'm just, I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm going to let it happen. I want to thank you very much. It's, it's, been a, it's been a great conversation, and I hope that we have the opportunity to continue it. Thank you.